Every day, your body goes through various metabolic processes to provide the energy you need to survive and be healthy. However, these pathways don't always function as they should and can lead to metabolic diseases. Pyruvate carboxylase deficiency, for instance, is a lethal metabolic disorder that affects 1 in 250,000 births. Pyruvate carboxylase catalyzes the ATP-dependent carboxylation of pyruvate, synthesizing oxaloacetate in the process. Pyruvate carboxylase and the formation of oxaloacetate is crucial in anaplerosis of the tricarboxylic acid cycle and in gluconeogenesis. The TCA cycle is amphibolic in nature, meaning it is involved in the synthesis and breakdown of metabolites. Anaplerosis is a process which replenishes the TCA cycle intermediates used up in anabolic processes. One of these anaplerotic reactions is the conversion of pyruvate to oxaloacetate, which is catalyzed by pyruvate carboxylase. Citrate synthase is the first enzyme involved in the TCA cycle and functions optimally when there is sufficient oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA. Therefore, when pyruvate carboxylase is missing, there is less oxaloacetate and the TCA cycle cannot function efficiently, which means less ATP is synthesized. In terms of gluconeogenesis, pyruvate is converted to oxaloacetate by pyruvate carboxylase. Oxaloacetate is then converted into phosphophenolpyruvate catalyzed by phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase. The substrate then undergoes a series of catalysis reactions resulting in the production of glucose. Therefore, without pyruvate carboxylase, glucose cannot be synthesized from pyruvate or oxaloacetate. The deficiency of pyruvic carboxylase presents with various symptoms including lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, liver failure, neuro defects, and hyperammonemia. In this video, we will be thoroughly investigating the symptoms associated with pyruvic carboxylase deficiency and possible ways to treat it. How do these symptoms arise? Lactic acidosis is caused by the compromised efficiency of the TCA cycle. Without the conversion of pyruvate to oxaloacetate, pyruvate accumulates. And the equilibrium enzyme lactate dehydrogenase shifts towards the production of lactate. Normally, lactate accumulation is alleviated by the liver via the Cori cycle. However, because there is no pyruvate carboxylase for gluconeogenesis, lactate will accumulate in the muscle and the blood, leading to a lactic acidosis, which lowers the blood pH. The compromisation of the Cori cycle also leads to lactate accumulation in the liver, leading to liver failure. Furthermore, ketoacidosis is also observed in pyruvate carboxylase deficient patients. Without oxaloacetate, citrate synthase cannot function optimally, leading to the accumulation of acetyl-CoA. Consequently, the body will undergo ketogenesis to alleviate the accumulation of acetyl-CoA, leading to ketoacidosis. Lastly, with regards to neuro defects, amino acids are normally metabolized first by transamination, a process which transfers the alpha amino group from the amino acid to alpha ketoglutarate, forming a carbon skeleton and glutamate. To reform alpha ketoglutarate, glutamate can undergo either transamination or deamination. In transamination, the amino group is transferred from glutamate to oxaloacetate. However, because there are low concentrations of oxaloacetate in pyruvate carboxylase deficient patients, the body relieves heavily on deamination to reform alpha ketoglutarate, producing ammonia in the process. Increased ammonia released in the bloodstream results in hyperammonemia, which is harmful to the development and function. In case study number one, a newborn presented with an abnormal EEG increased plasma and ammonia, ketoacidosis, elevated abnormal metabolites, and decreased activity of the pyruvate carboxylase. Biotin is the cofactor responsible for the carbon dioxide transfer on many carboxylase enzymes, including pyruvate carboxylase. Cofactor therapy is a supplementation of cofactors and has shown to have marked improvements in clinical tests. Therefore, by supplementing the newborn with biotin, we expect to see an increase in pyruvate carboxylase activity and improvement of overall symptoms. The patient was supplemented with an initial dose of 40 mg of biotin at 51 hours of age, followed by 20 mg of biotin twice a day. After biotin treatment, the patient experienced a significant improvement in pyruvate carboxylase activity. Prior to treatment, 
Pyruvic carboxylase activity in leukocytes was less than 2 picomoles per minute per milligram per protein, while normal activity level is around 5 to 20 picomoles per minute per milligram per protein. However, after 10 days of biotin treatment, pyruvic carboxylase activity has increased to and remained in normal range. Here, you can see that pyruvic carboxylase activity increased to around 15 picomoles per minute per milligram per protein at 13 days, and was around 8 picomoles per minute per milligram per protein at 42 days, both within normal range. The restoration of pyruvic carboxylase activity was able to improve many of the patient's symptoms. After biotin treatment, the EEG returned to normal. There was a decrease in plasma ammonia, a decrease in ketoacidosis, and a decrease in abnormal metabolites, including lactic acid. Here, you can see lactic acid levels decreased over the course of biotin treatment. Lactic acid levels peaked at around 1,500 micromoles per milligram at 4 days of age, and decreased to as low as 0.75 micromoles per milligrams at 40 days. The ability of biotin supplementation to return pyruvic carboxylase activity to normal is significant. By directly correcting the enzyme deficiency rather than treating the symptoms, biotin supplementation offers a promising treatment for pyruvic carboxylase deficiency. In case 2, a 16-month infant presented with severe mental and motor retardation lactic acidosis, increased levels of urine lactate and pyruvate, and low levels of hepatic pyruvic carboxylase activity. Shown in Table 1, the patient had pyruvic carboxylase activity of 0.43, whereas it is normally around 2.0. What did the doctors do to treat her pyruvic carboxylase insufficiency? Well, they treated her with thiamine and lipoic acid. 100 mg of lipoic acid and 3 g of thiamine were administered once daily. After two weeks, the blood lactate returned to a normal range and urinary lactate excretion decreased from 0.37 to 0.12 mg per mg of creatinine. Urinary pyruvate excretion is also decreased from 0.14 to 0.03 mg per mg of creatinine. Creatinine is just used as a baseline for ratio comparison with the sample in question. One and a half months after starting the treatment, discontinuation of thiamine and lipoic acid resulted in a marked increase in blood lactate. However, resumption of the treatment again lowered the blood lactate level. In summary, her blood lactate and pyruvate levels became elevated above normal level and decreased the normal range in response to thiamine and lipoic acid. Thiamine works by inhibiting the phosphorylation of pyruvate decarboxylase complex by thiamine pyrophosphate. Therefore, pyruvate decarboxylase remains in its active form and facilitates the oxidation of pyruvate. Furthermore, thiamine and lipoic acid are cofactors of pyruvate dehydrogenase. By increasing cofactors of pyruvate dehydrogenase and increasing pyruvate dehydrogenase, pyruvate concentration decreases as it is converted to acetyl-CoA. Lactic acid dehydrogenase is a near-equilibrium enzyme, therefore, with a decrease in pyruvate, it oxidizes lactate back into this pyruvate form, therefore decreasing lactic levels in the blood. A newborn patient presented with low blood pH levels, high lactate, and high plasma ammonia. To treat the patient, treheptanoin was initially prescribed as an anaploidic therapy. Treheptanoin is an odd carbon fatty acid that can be broken down via beta oxidation to propanol CoA and acetyl CoA. In theory, by administering treheptanoin to pyruvate carboxylase deficient patients, treheptanoin acts as a source of propanol CoA, which could be converted to succinyl CoA, and subsequently oxaloacetate through the TCA cycle. With the restoration of the deficit of oxaloacetate, Gluconeogenesis function is enhanced as the deficit of oxaloacetate from deficient pyruvic carboxylase is reduced. Furthermore, the TCA cycle is also improved as increased oxaloacetate improves citrate synthase function. With improved citrate synthase function, more acetyl-CoA can be used, thereby increasing pyruvate conversion to acetyl-CoA and reducing pyruvate conversion to lactate. As early as 4 hours after the initial dose of trihaptanoin, there was a dramatic improvement in lactate acid levels. Here, you can see the lactate levels decrease significantly. 
from about 0.17 millimoles per liter before treatment to around 0.12 millimoles per liter just after 4 hours of terhaptanoin treatment. In the graph, you can also see the ratio of lactate to pyruvate decrease. Terhaptanoin was also able to decrease plasma ammonia. By indirectly increasing oxaloacetate levels, terhaptanoin was able to increase transamination and decrease deamination for the regeneration of alpha-ketoglutarate in amino acid metabolism. The decrease in deamination is evident in this graph, where plasma ammonia levels decrease from about 250 micromolars per liter to just about 60 micromolars per liter in just 4 hours of treatment. Further evidence of this improvement of the TCA cycle is found when measuring the urinary secretion of TCA cycle intermediates. Within two weeks, there was a progressive increase of succinate, malate, and fumarate. However, at around four months, indicated by the gray arrow, there was a decrease in TCA cycle intermediate secretion and an increase in lactate and ketone bodies. This decrease in TCA cycle intermediates was due to an increase in caloric intake with the same amount of treptanoin. To treat the return of the symptoms, doctors administered citrate and 2-chloropropanate along with trahaptanoin therapy and some diet restrictions. Evidently, lactate levels decreased and TCA cycle intermediate secretion increased once again. In conclusion of the study, the prompt and stable recovery of this infant provides support of anaplorotic therapy involving the oxidation of trahaptanoin to acetocoy and propanocoy as substrates of the TCA cycle. The enhanced production of succinocoy from propanocoy eliminated the deficit of oxaloacetate, permitting normal operations of the TCA cycle and gluconeogenesis. Furthermore, to assist with treatment, citrate and 2-chloropropanoid supplementation was used to enhance the export of trahaptanoin metabolites from the liver. The diversity of treatments outlined in our case studies provide a promising outlook for patients diagnosed with pyruvate carboxylase deficiencies. Supplementations using the cofactor biotin to facilitate maximum pyruvate carboxylase activation produced positive results as it corrects the root of the problem, deficient pyruvate carboxylase, instead of solely focusing on the symptoms. In addition, treatment using thiamine in combination with lipoic acid proved successful by inhibiting the inactivation of pyruvate decarboxylase and alleviating the symptoms by increasing lactate conversion to pyruvate. In another study, a patient was treated with trahaptanoin, an odd chain fatty acid, which when oxidized, would produce succinyl-CoA. Succinyl-CoA provides an alternate method to refill the pools of oxaloacetate, thereby bypassing the need for pyruvate carboxylase to convert pyruvate to oxaloacetate. These treatments were chosen based on basic knowledge of the various metabolic processes and reactions, such as the TCA cycle and different phase of pyruvate. Biotin, for instance, was chosen as a therapy because it is a cofactor of pyruvate carboxylase. Lipoic acid and thiamine were administered as they increased pyruvate dehydrogenase activity. And lastly, treptanoin therapy was tried based on the knowledge that odd chain fatty acids oxidize to propanol CoA, an anaplorotic substrate that replenishes pyruvate carboxylase products. Pyruvate carboxylase deficiencies can bring about diverse clinical symptoms. Therefore, the successful treatment of patients with varying therapies are important as it shows efficacy and effectiveness in a number of patients. If you liked our video, don't forget to leave a like and comment down below of what you thought about our video. Remember to check out our YouTube channel for more videos like this and don't forget to subscribe.